huh, I wanna see if roller rockers will make a difference on this old 1965 Fastback with a 289 in it. So this engine obviously did not come with roller rockers. Just a stamp steel rocker is what came on this car. As you can see, I've actually already changed one of them out just to make sure that it would clear. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and start this car up. I want you to hear it. So I've already replaced the rocker arm that was making noise. I'll go ahead and include some of that footage for you guys. We're gonna listen to the engine. We're also gonna listen to the exhaust. Here's the thing. The valves have not been touched or adjusted in this car since 1997. I was the last one to ever adjust the valves on this thing. And I remember exactly where I was whenever I did it. Back then, the only way I knew how to adjust valves was to tighten them up until they stopped making noise. That's how we did it, or it's how I did it anyway. So I'm curious to see if now a set of roller rockers adjusted with the proper preload will make any difference. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and start this thing up and get a good idea of how it sounds. So now that we've got all of our roller rockers out and somewhat cleaned up all the gunk off of them, let's talk about what a roller rocker is. A roller rocker has bearings here and here with a wheel versus this, okay? You can see that there's gonna be a little friction there because that's actually not a bearing. That is nothing more than two pieces of metal that rotate on each other. And then you have this flat tappet here. Now, as you can see, this thing's got a lot of wear on it, right? Well, this somewhat prevents that. They will still get wear, but what this does is essentially just free up some horsepower for you. That's all it does. It doesn't change the lift unless you go on a Ford at least. I think Chevrolet, the old Chevrolets are 1.5, but on a Ford, 1.6 is your standard ratio. You can go to a 1.7, 1.72, and things like that. If you go to a 1.7, you're gonna increase your lift by, I think about 30 thousandths if I'm not mistaken. Let's go ahead and throw these things on. Yeah, I bet you EFI guys are jealous now, huh? As you can see, we have one roller rocker already on the car. That's because this one was really loose and I just wanted to verify that, I don't know, it was gonna work, I guess. So what we're gonna do now is just go ahead and pop all of these things off and I'm gonna start all of my roller rockers loosely on here. And then I'll show you guys once again, my procedure for setting the valves. For those of you who just don't fully understand the firing order, the best thing for you to do is do them individually, and I'll show you that in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these push rods out, check them for straightness. They should be fine. Good quick way to tell if your push rods are bent is just find a flat table, somewhat at least. And basically you're just looking to see if one of the ends jump up. All right, then you just want to blow through them, make sure that you know they're not clogged. Everything looks good. Drop them back in. When you install your roller rockers, make sure that you put them in the right direction. So see the difference in these two? There's a flat spot there, and this end is more rounded. So the flat spot will always go right here to the top. When you hear poly locks, this is what people are talking about. They're basically just a lock nut is all they are. I'm just taking a screwdriver because that kind of fits in there and backing this off a little bit. You wanna go ahead and back your inside locking nut off as much as you can. And then all we're gonna do is go down till we feel any resistance at all and stop for now. Okay, obviously make sure that your car is in neutral and we're gonna go ahead and start the valve adjustment process. So 
I like to use my solenoid. Uh, it's a little easier. So I just come over here, connect these two. And I, what I want to do is I want to bump the starter and make sure that this is on the base circle. So I want to make sure that this rocker arm is not moving. If you bump the engine over a couple times and it doesn't move, that means it's on the base circle and it's not on an actual lobe of the cam. See, it didn't move. All right, so I feel confident we're on the base circle here. So all I'm gonna do is turn this finger tight. And I'm gonna come up here and start with a half turn. So that's a quarter. And that's a half. That's probably all we'll do on this engine. Um, we'll just try it at a half turn and see what happens. So at that point, all you have to do is lock the center down. Remember, there's a uh, set screw in there, essentially. Lock that down. Like that. And then just give it a little bump. Ever so slightly. And that'll lock everything into place. See how it's moving? We have to wait on it to stop moving. Alright, stop moving. There we go. One more time. Quarter. Half. Lock the center down. One more little bump and you're good to go. We got all the roller rockers installed. Let's go ahead, fire this thing up and see if we can notice any difference. I'm pretty sure we're going to have some smoke from the oil that dripped down on the headers and also you're going to hear them tap more than likely until they pump up. This is not a big cam in this car. This is actually a really small camshaft. So if nothing else, this tells us that, you know, rockers alone aren't gonna make you sound like you got a bigger cam. I think a lot of times people think that by going to a 1.7 or something, that it's gonna make their car hit better or even just roller rockers in general. So I can tell you that the car seems more responsive. Uh, I don't wanna rev it up too much. I've kind of been out here doing this all day. So I don't want to get too carried away with it, but I'll definitely play around with the car a little bit and then I'll let you know if it did make a difference or not. If nothing else, the valves are now adjusted correctly and I noticed that we have a loose motor mount. So I got to get under there, lift the car back up and fix this loose motor mount. You can see the motor kind of shifting around. With all that being said though, the 65, AKA the Grey Ghost now has roller rockers on it. So that's kind of cool, right? What did we learn today? I don't know, probably not much anything, but we had fun trying. I'll catch you guys in the next one and as always, Thanks for watching.